Um, it's around Revelation 18. Um, or 16, 15. Ah, here it is, 15. It's the first use of it. Um, 14, they're talking about Babylon, another variety of this, you know, Belial, Babylon, uh, Beelzebub, all those are variations on the Bela, Belial, Balaam, devil language. And um, so, 14.7, and there are fountains of water, another angel followed, saying, the great city Babylon has fallen, has fallen. That's always Rome, or Revelation. Because she has given all nations to drink of the wine of the fury of her fornication. The wine of her fury of her fornication. That is an eschatological image having to do with, um, you know, giving people this fury to drink. But he shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out full strength into the cup of his anger. And he shall be tormented in fire and brimstone. We just heard the fire and brimstone in the dream. Before the holy angels and the sight of the Lamb. So here we have that he shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength in the cup of his <coughs> anger. Later on in chapter uh, 16, you gave the prophets blood to drink and so on and so forth. I'm just seeing if there's one more usage of this here before we go back. Oh yeah, there it is. Line 19. And the great Babylon was remembered by God. Remember, they, a book of remembrance before God will be written out. Was remembered by God to give her the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. So that imagery of the cup of wine of fury and so on has to do with divine vengeance. Okay. And the same thing here. It does not have to do with a wicked, with a wicked Mas uh, Maccabean king who got drunk at a banquet and was killed somehow. No, it has to do with God pouring out his the wine of uh, the fury of his anger. So here it is. Uh, the cup of the right hand of God will come around to shame him. Because he did not circumcise, there's that foreskin of his heart imagery picking up the privy parts material earlier, and walked in the way of satiety, or filling, or filling his cup, in the way of drinking his fill. That is, he walked in the way of drinking his fill of the cup of the wrath of God. But the cup of the wrath of God would swallow him. There it is, the imagery from Revelation. Why would the cup of the wrath of God swallow him? And he would drink it to its dregs, and so on, because of what he did to the righteous teacher. Helen 12, the blood of men, the bottoms of the land, the township, the interpretation of this passage concerns the wicked priest. He will be paid the reward, which he rewarded the poor. Remember, um, to pay, uh, pay the reward is in the community rule, now it's here. But uh, it now says that they would pay him back. Um, so, because Lebanon is, oh, well, here's the poor, <coughs> Ibionim, so the name of the community are the poor, uh, the Ebionites, followers of James again, because Lebanon is the council of the community, why is it called Lebanon? Because the council of the community dresses in white, and Lebanon, Levan, means white, because Mount Lebanon is a white-covered mountain. <coughs> And Levon in Hebrew, Leban is milk, Leban is white. It is, has to do with the, the white linen they wore. And the dumb beasts are the symbol of Judah doing the Torah. Again, the Torah doing image. Just as he conspired to destroy the poor, Ibanim, the Ibanim are not in this text. Now we've seen the Ibanim in the war scroll, in the uh, Damascus document, and now here. So too God would judge him, the wicked priest, to destruction. And as to the same, because of the blood, the township, the bonds of the land, its interpretation is the township is Jerusalem, where the wicked priest committed his works of abomination, polluting the temple of God. There's a pollution of the temple. The bonds of the land relates to the cities of Judah, where he sold the sustenance of the, or the riches of the poor. Remember, the Herodian bully boys take 
the tithes of the poor priests twice in the run up to the war against Rome. Finally, what use are graven images whose makers form the casting in images and lying, and whom the craftsman puts his trust when he creates dumb idols? The interpretation of the passage concerns the idols of the nations, which they create in order to serve and bow down to them. These will not save them on the day of judgment. So now we're talking about the day of judgment. Look, the Ibanim have been destroyed somewhat. The Ibanites, the followers of James or whoever you want to say it is. Certainly that's another name for the community. And But now we're getting allusion to the day of judgment. Look, pieces of wood awake, dumb arise. This cannot God behold, it's covered with gold and silver. There's no spirit in it, but the Lord is in his holy temple, beside it before him all the world. Now this is the most poignant and most um, moving way to express how these people felt at the very end of things. Its interpretation concerns all the nations who serve stone and wood. But on the day of judgment, God will destroy all servants of idols and all evil ones off the earth. These people are waiting for the day of judgment. That's when their revenge is going to be finally consummated. They are not going to survive. They know the Roman armies are all about them. They know that the Ebionim have been destroyed by the wicked priests to some extent. They know that you know, they're not going to make it. I think. But they have faith in God. And they say the Lord is in his holy temple. Be silent before him all the world. And on the day of judgment, God will pay them back for what has been done. Uh, he will destroy all the servants of idols, the foreign armies, the idolaters or whatever. Muhammad picks this up in the Koran. The idolaters are the enemies in the Koran. Muhammad speaks over and over about the Day of Judgment in the Quran. Somehow this communicated itself down six centuries to him. Then he picks it up in his own poetic way. Also with Christian theology that the Jews kill all of the prophets, etc. And gives his own peculiar presentation of it in the Quran. How did it all get down to him? <coughs> I think through these different bathing groups in northern Syria. Muhammad was on caravan uh, trade into southern Iraq, maybe went as far as northern Iraq and Syria. We know that he was uh, in the caravan trade. He would have met these bathing groups like the Sabaeans, like the Suba of the Marshes, that are the Mandaeans of southern Iraq, are still in Iraq today, supposedly followers of John the Baptist. Manic 